Hello there, everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and this is going to be a very special video for Halloween. Happy Halloween to everyone. I am here with a very special guest, Film Fan 0599. Hey, what's up, you guys? Film Fan 0599 here again, and we are here for a franchise review. No, we are not just reviewing one movie, not two movies, not three movies, not four movies, not five movies, not six, not seven. We are reviewing Eight, eight damn movies, movies here today here today in this franchise of halloween so here's how this idea came up about so tony and i were trying to figure out what we should do for a halloween review this year because um i always come on for at least one halloween review each year mm -hmm. and we didn't know what to do and he wanted to watch all the halloween films so what did i suggest to him i suggested i would sit down and watch every single one of the original Halloween films with him and review every single one of the Halloween films with him. And uh, yeah, now here we are. And that does mean we are not including the Rob Zombie movies, which Thank I know is the good, high heavens, which is good news for Film Fan 0599. Because, uh, yeah, Film Fan, do you want to give your quick five second thoughts on both Rob Zombie movies? The dog shit. Now moving on. So, of course, let's first talk about. The movie that started it all, John Carpenter's Halloween. <laughs> Halloween is like what I just said. It is directed by John Carpenter. He also wrote the screenplay along with Deborah Hill. The movie stars Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Pleasance. The film is about Michael Myers. He killed his sister. And then we cut to 15 years later when Michael Myers comes back into town and his killing spree continues from there. So I will go ahead and let you start off first, Double Nine. Uh, what do you think of John Carpenter's Halloween? There's a holy trinity, in my opinion, of horror films. You got The Shining, you got The Exorcist, and you got Halloween. Halloween is truly not only one of the greatest horror films ever made, but one of the greatest movies ever made in general, in my opinion. This movie was an absolute landmark in the genre, um, created on such a low budget, and, you know, not having as much, you know, had a lot of limitations to it, but was able to accomplish so much with it. John Carpenter's directing is some of the best directing I've ever seen, to be honest, in this movie. The way he builds tension and builds up to the suspense of Michael Myers and all the killings that he does. It's very intense and it's very scary, especially, you know, in, you know, um, a lot of the scenes where Michael is in there. And especially, like, some of the points where you're, like, in the perspective of his mask as well. Like, I liked how he uh, did that kind of uh, camera trick a bit where, you know, we get into the perspective of his mask. That was pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of things that are done very well. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, this was actually her very first movie, not just, you know, this was the very first movie she ever did. So, um, and she kind of set a landmark in horror as well as the term Scream Queen. So she was like the first in that um, perspective to do that. And she is w one of the best, honestly. Like, uh, she's one of my personal favorite actresses, and this is the one that um, started it all for her. And uh, this is definitely still to this day, in my opinion, her best performance. I really think she brings a lot to this character, brings a lot of um, emotion, a lot of, uh, you know, depth and stuff like that. This is truly one of the greatest movies ever made, in my opinion. It definitely is a movie that I do enjoy quite a bit. There's definitely a lot to really admire when it comes into this film, especially like what you stated, the limitations that this movie had, you know, when it was getting made, what they had to do on such a small budget. It truly is quite impressive what John Carpenter was able to pull off. He does a really impressive job directing it, as well as writing the screenplay along with Deborah Hill. Most of the dialogue is very interesting. There is admittedly some dialogue that's not the best, and that is one of my issues with the film. Some of the dialogue isn't the best read, it, and the acting isn't always that good either either i do think the film does suffer from some really wooden acting from laurie strode's friends i thought uh their acting was very wooden and i even thought the little boy tommy he was a little bit wooden but like i would say jamie lee curtis is absolutely fantastic as laurie strode 
considering this is her first movie, she truly brought this character to life. Whether she's feeling happy, whether she's feeling scared, just all these emotions she was able to bring was truly impressive. You also have Donald Pleasance, who is also incredible as Dr. Loomis. This character is always just very interesting, in my opinion. I love following Dr. Loomis as much as I love following Laurie Strode, and there's some other good performances in the film as well. But if I have to really talk about the standouts, it's absolutely Jamie Lee Curtis, Donald Pleasance, and obviously the actor that portrays Michael Myers for what he had to do for Michael Myers really was so cool. There's not a whole ton of kills with this film, and I think that's what made it interesting for me. Um, you may get few kills in this film, but whenever there is a kill in this film, it is very effective. And it is very well done, um, and it is very intense. And I think the beauty of what John Carpenter does with this one is that he definitely builds the tension. He builds the intensity so that way, once Michael Myers does actually kill someone, it makes it a little bit more impactful, I think. And I absolutely agree with you. When we see everything from Michael My Myers' point of view for a little bit, before we get to see him in like his full form, that was a nice touch, too. The cinematography is great. And of course, you can't go wrong with the iconic Halloween theme that John Carpenter created. The bah, 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 bah. like that's definitely one of my favorite horror themes of all time, without a doubt. I, I never get tired of hearing that theme. It's so good. The climax, especially, is definitely my favorite part of the film. Just where everything led to that climax was just truly exciting. Yes, does it have its horror cliches? Yes, it does. Is some of the dialogue not always the best? Yes, and some of the acting is quite wooden. And I do think the ending, while very impactful, I did feel it was a little bit rushed. But even with those criticisms, like I said, I still dug this movie a whole lot. Like you said, um, with Donald Pleasance, yeah, Donald Pleasance like brings a lot to this character as well of uh, Doctor Loomis. He's probably my favorite character in the whole franchise, to be honest. Like I always find his character very fascinating, and um, you know, he and Donald Pleasance just uh, brings a lot to his char uh, character. He really does. Um, I love his performances in uh, all the movies that he's in. So he brings uh, so much to his character and, you know, makes us really uh, truly feel for him. And uh, like you said before, that iconic score of just, you know, dun 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 dun, like it's one of maybe not, uh, maybe the best horror score, maybe. It's absolutely incredible and really fits um, in the scenes that's presented. Also in the opening credits, like one of my all time favorite opening credits is the one to Halloween. It's simple, but it's so effective. Like, I oh, love yeah, it. Yep. Oh, yeah, the opening credits is awesome. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, it's just, what else could you say about this movie that I think really many people, you know, have said already? It is truly one, it's, it's a timeless classic. It really is. It's a movie that, um, as of what we're filming this, we barely just, you know, um, ended off on the 40th anniversary of it. And, you know, uh, people are still talking about this and it's absolutely incredible overall like i said i really do dig this movie quite a bit i do think it's a very solid feature and definitely one i could definitely go back and rewatch over for definitely the halloween season and like double nine said happy 40th anniversary to halloween because as we are recording this uh entire video we actually are recording it on october 27th which is when the original um, turned 40 years old. So that being said, I am going to give the original Halloween 1978 three out of four stars. You know, my left scale, I'm going to give this an A+. Plus. I know how original, but like I said before, <laughs> um, it's one of the all-time best, in my opinion. It's probably, like, my third favorite horror film of all time. It's an absolutely incredible film. If you somehow have never seen this movie, please go out and see it. It's a truly timeless classic, and it holds up still 40 years later. So now we're going to be talking about Halloween 2. So Halloween 2 literally... Like, we mean literally. <laughs> <laughs> picks up where the first Halloween ended. One story is Dr. Loomis and an officer having to go hunt down Michael Myers. And the other side of the story of this film takes place at a hospital, which is where Laurie Strode is at. 
And let's just say Michael Myers just happens to be at this hospital. Halloween 2, this one is, um, this was not directed by John Carpenter this time, but it is still written by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, like the original. So you do still have the original writers back for this one, which I think is cool. Just this time around, you have a different director, and the director is Rick Rosenthal. And of course, just like with the original, the film does star Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Pleasance. And in my opinion, I have to say, I actually enjoyed this one quite a bit, just like with the original. I think, in my opinion, the original and Halloween 2 serve as a really solid, really fun double feature that I could watch around this time. And, and yeah, it's cool because um, because literally the movies are on the same day. Like they're literally like once immediately Halloween is Halloween one is over, you can just pop in two because literally the story continues from there. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, and that's the that's the cool thing too. I did like how Halloween two opened up with the ending of the original Halloween. Yeah, it's it's very cool. Like I like how they did that. Like um because we don't really see most movies do that really when it comes to sequels, like literally taking up immediately like uh, like talking literally immediately where the first one left off. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I think the fact that Halloween 2 like they could have done with a different story. They easily could have gone with, oh, this is what happened maybe a year after the original or something. But no, they just said, nope, we're going to show you what else happened after the original. So I thought that was a clever take personally. Oh, for, oh same. I agree 100%. What did you like about Halloween 2? I'll let you talk a little more about it. Um, Halloween Two is a very interesting sequel because, like, um, because you know how with a lot of sequels, like, how do you follow such a movie that was, you know, so incredible and you know followed up with the sequel? And I do think Halloween Two is a very fun sequel. I really like it a lot. They definitely up the ante a lot more in this one. Um, lots and lots more uh crazy stuff happened in this one. One of the funniest scenes I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Um. Can I talk about it, please? Oh, oh, okay, okay. I have to ask. Was it that cat, that cat jump scare? No, you. I, I, I have a feeling you know what I'm talking about. The fake Michael Myers. Oh my God! Yes. Okay. So. Oh, this, oh, oh yeah. Um, that scene in particular. Oh my God. <laughs> the, I'll just say this: involves a police car, it involves a fake Michael Myers, and it's the greatest thing I think I've ever seen in my whole life. It's. <laughs> I know, I know. Me and you were dying of laughter. We right were point. laughing hysterically at that. That was that was amazing. Um, but yeah, they definitely do up the ante a lot more in this one. Um, <laughs> especially in that finale. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, yeah. Cause, yeah. Because whereas in the first, you don't really see blood in the first. The second one actually did show blood, like when he's killing someone. Yeah, because um, like like we said in the our original for the first one, the first one had a lot of a limita limitations to it. So with this one, I think they didn't have as many limitations with it. So I feel like they could do a lot more with the sequel. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, and for the most part, I would say um, I um quite liked where they uh went with it. There are some really good elements to it, like um, Donald Pleasance. Um, and uh, him with the cop, I really like that story a lot. And them trying to find out where the hell Michael Myers is, and you know, stuff like that. And uh, for the most part, I was interested in Lloyd Stride's story in the hospital. Um, uh, one of my issues with the film was that it, it is a bit slow, that story at times. Like, mm -hmm. there are some times where I'm kind of not interested in it, I just want to go back to Donald Pleasant and the cop, to right. be honest, because I thought that was the bit of a stronger story in the movie, but um. But yeah, I still like that story overall, especially when we got to the like the third act of the film. Where, where it just goes bonkers. Uh, oh, it goes bonkers. But yeah, and um, as for other issues that I have with the um, movie, um, there is a twist in the film that I think is kind of dumb. Um, which I, I think we'll probably talk about once we talk about the third act of the film. But um, mm. I, did, I did think that was kind of unnecessary i didn't really and plus it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be honest so mm -hmm. yeah I, I wasn't a big fan of that and like i mentioned before it's a little bit slow at, it's a little bit slow at times with the hospital story and i will admit the movie even though i enjoyed it when it went uh bonkers at points i will admit it kind of 
it, it kind of does a little bit much at times. <laughs> I'm kind of like, okay, like we uh, listen, I get it, but like, let's tone it down just a bit. Like, you know, the first one was kind of subtle, and like this one's just kind of being a little bit too non-subtle, a little too big. Yeah, a little too big. But um, overall, it, it's a really enjoyable sequel. The directing is still really good with this, even though John Carpenter didn't direct it. it still has his feel. For the most part, I feel like, like it still is very well directed, very well edited. It has some really good cinematography to it, and uh, yeah, overall, it's a fun sequel. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is still great as uh, Laurie Stride, you know. Um, so oh, uh, yeah, Stro Strode, just Stro the Stro character. Strode, thank you. Um, but yeah, um, she she's still really great in the movie. So yeah, overall, it's a very fun sequel. I quite enjoy it a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I have to honestly agree with what he said. Like I just said earlier, I think it does such a good job of picking up where the first one ended. I really did enjoy a lot seeing the side of the story with Dr. Loomis and the officer having to track down Michael Myers. There's a lot of really interesting moments that go on in that side of the story. It was cool to really get two different stories happening in the sequel. I thought that was kind of nice of John Carpenter, Deborah Hill and their screenplay to kind of go back and forth. And uh, I did really enjoy the bits with the hospital a lot. I can agree when we come to the hospital, it does kind of start out slow, but like once Michael Myers arrives at the hospital, oh man, does it create for some oh, yeah. just really good kills. Some of my favorite kills in this entire series do come from the second one, honestly. Like oh they, one especially involving like a hot uh, like a hot tub sort of a oh, thing. Oh the, the hot tub without giving much away. Yeah, the hot tub in particular. Oh God, what they where they go with that one. Oh my yeah, there's a there's a hot tub one that was really good. Um and then they do have silly moments like a cat jumping out of the trash or something. Oh my God. Probably the funniest jump scare I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh my god. Normally when stuff like that happens, it normally bothers me, but for some reason when the Halloween 2 did that, it just made me laugh uh, very hard. Oh yeah, for sure. And obviously Jamie Lee Curtis, she still just kills it as Laurie Strode. She really is just so good as his character, and Donald Pleasance also does an incredible job as Dr. Loomis, as he always does. And I think the actor that plays the officer even did a really good job and i liked how he was there for a good majority of that side of the story yeah i thought um, he gave an even better performance in this one than he did in the first one honestly like I, I i enjoyed him in the first one but i felt like he did a lot better honestly in this one yeah yeah and i and i felt the officer had more to do here in the sequel honestly oh yeah for sure in terms of my flaws i would agree with double nine that when we get to the hospital as i already said maybe it's a little bit slow um i wasn't really a fan of how they remixed the halloween theme this time around yeah i did like i did like the rest of the music in the film i just felt whenever they played the remix of the original theme i was all like oh why couldn't you just play the original theme from the very first film because it's just so good and the remix while i'm not going to say it's terrible or anything but i still just wasn't too big on it but aside from that i do think the music is still very well done and uh, to go back to what Double Nine said earlier, even though this one isn't directed by John Carpenter, I do think uh, Rick did a very good job of capturing John Carpenter's style of directing. I think he was able to capture that as well as possible, and I did think he really succeeded with that. The cinematography still looks really gorgeous, like with the original. The original and this one are both beautifully shot. I didn't mind it being over the top for the most part, but there's times where I'm like, okay, you're getting a little too over the top for your own good for sure there. Similar to the original film, there's maybe a couple of actors uh, or actresses that I thought were kind of wooden, maybe a couple from in the hospital that I didn't think have necessarily the best acting or the best dialogue. Similar to the original, it was kind of rushed towards the end. It's the same issue I had with the original where it's like, it's still a really good ending, but I just still had that feeling where just like in the last like two, three minutes, it just felt a little bit rushed the way they were wrapping it up. But honestly, even with those issues I brought up, I still had a lot of fun with this. That's really all I can say as far as Halloween 2 goes. I think it's a worthy sequel to the original film. So I'm going to give Halloween 2 the same rating I gave the original, which is three out of four stars. And um, I'm going to give it 
B plus. It's a really good sequel. Um, I quite enjoy it a lot. Um, real quick before we end this, we have to talk about we have to talk about the fucking third act to this movie, please. Oh, okay, we have, I, I I actually forgot about that. Okay, yes, yes. Let's talk about the. We third have act. to talk about this third act. So if you haven't seen Halloween two, yeah, yeah, big spoilers because we need to talk about this because this is the wackiest. Uh, one of the wackiest third acts I've ever seen to a horror film. So, firsthand, it, <laughs> so <laughs> we had a running joke throughout this, and this is where it started, where that Michael Byers just wouldn't die. Nothing could kill this man. Oh um, my god, yes. So he gets stabbed in the eyes firsthand at first <laughs> in this final battle. Then an explosion happened. We're talking <laughs> an explosion. <laughs> oh man, we're talking an explosion. God damn it! Oh my god! And I was like, I even said to Tony, I was like, okay, if this, if if he is still alive after that, I'm gonna lose it. And then we see him coming out in the ball of flames. <laughs> I'm like, how? <laughs> oh man, we were losing it. <laughs> And then it's even gotten to the point where we thought Dr. Loomis was going to die, and he even he didn't die. No! He returns for the fourth movie! <laughs> oh, man. And then um, one of my flaws of the twist. Now, the twist of the movie is is that um, Lori, uh, Lori and Michael are siblings. That's the, that's the twist of this whole thing. I think it's kind of stupid. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense. I don't really know why they kept that in, to be honest. Mm hmm but um uh now it, I, I and honestly if i believe i believe if that if that wasn't in the film i think the second movie wouldn't be uh knocked from the canon to be honest for this new one because you know they didn't yeah. want that plot twist that they were siblings because i think even they thought it was stupid years later so oh, yeah of course um so yeah i thought that was really dumb i didn't really think they uh needed to do that to be honest Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot to say my thoughts on the twist. Uh, I didn't really mind the twist all that much. I did kind of like where they led to that. But it's one of those things where I can understand why someone like it. And while I do think it's unfortunate this one isn't canon with the 2018 one, I can understand why because of that twist. And even though I do enjoy the twist, I don't know how it can necessarily work for the 2018 one. Now we're gonna be talking about Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. So, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch is written and directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, who actually directed the IT miniseries, and the film stars Tom Atkins. So, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch is about when these kids all over America, they want these masks from Silver Shamrock for Halloween. And so, it's up to the doctor to solve the mystery going on with the owner. Yeah, when it came to Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, I did hear a lot about this, how there's no Michael Myers, how it's uh, stood on its own. So, I was interested to see how a standalone Halloween film could go considering it's a third film. And I know there's a cult following to this film, but I got to be honest, when I say I thought this was absolutely horrible, I that's an truly... Under, that, that is a damn understatement, okay? <laughs> um, and you can tell how film fan feels too based on that, but yeah, I thought this movie was utter crap. There was not a lot I liked about this movie, but I guess to start off with my positives, I will say um, I thought the uh, lead actor sometimes wasn't too bad. I thought sometimes he did add a certain charm to him that I did appreciate. I thought the music at times was pretty good not all the time but there were points where i was like okay the music is kind of effective and i thought and I, i'm using sometimes a lot because it's all it's like certain good things i did find this film only worked in some parts of this film uh that's how much i really hated this film 
But I will say sometimes Tommy Lee Wallace did, um, I won't say good, but a competent job directing the film at some parts, at least. I thought he did a competent job of moving the camera around and trying to get me immersed in this atmosphere. And that's it, to be honest. Um, okay, okay. There was like one brutal kill I kind of liked, uh, dealing with the head being pulled out. I'll admit, that was actually kind of cool. Besides that, yeah, I really hated this movie. And uh, film fan, I'll go ahead and let you say what you have to say before I get to my stuff. Hey, um, so, ladies and gentlemen, um, Halloween Three Seasons of the Witch is easily one of the worst horror films I think I've ever seen in my whole life. Um, this is a legit pile of shit. Um, this is a dumpster fire of a movie. Um, everything is wrong with but this in my eyes. Um, the acting is some of the worst I think I've ever seen. This movie is not scary in the one in the least bit. Never a time that I care about any of the characters. A lot of stupid shit happens in this, and it's just. Where does the, like, honestly, even if it's, like, I know some people are like, oh, the only reason people don't like this one is because Michael Myers is not involved. Even if, even if this wasn't, like, a part of the Halloween series, and this uh, was just on its own, and, like, just... Even on its own, I still feel... Even on its own, it's a pile of shit. Like, it, it is. Like, this... Oh my god, like, the movie is so incompetently made, honestly. Like, it is not... It is poorly directed, this film. This felt like something just that felt like it was straight to DVD, honestly. Even worse, to be honest. Like, the directing with this movie is god-awful. The music is horrible. Like, talk about downgrading for the first two, to be honest. Oh, man. Like, there's so much stupid stuff that happens in this movie. Like, for like, the, like the lady with the random laser beams? Oh my god! And like, and like, the, the the doctors like having sex with like one of the um, with like one of the uh, dude's daughters or some crap like that. And they and they like hear it and they're like, no, 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 we're not gonna check it out because we're too busy having sex. Like someone's dead. Like what? Um, and oh. then once like just the shit goes down and whatever, it becomes even dumber than it was before. It is the literal definition of a movie that gets worse and worse as it goes on. And just the whole storyline of how they handle the whole Silver Shamrock thing. Oh, and every time we had to hear that freaking jingle through the television screen, I know you agree with me. I got really annoyed every time we had to hear like that. Tony Silver and I Shamrock literally thing. want to bash our heads in with. A, a Bob Dwyer baseball bat, honestly. Like, we just, uh, we were tired of it every time I heard it. Now, every time I hear that kick jingle, I will just want to throw something. It, it just. Yeah, that whole entire storyline, um, like I already said, I thought was really stupid. I think this is a really horribly written film by Tommy Lee Wallace. I thought it contains. You want to know some something? I don't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> Michael Myers not being in this is the least of this movie's problems. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, yes. Him not even being in this movie is the least of its problems. Honestly. Oh, it is. Uh, yeah, the screenplay is absolute trash. It ha contains some of the worst dialogue I've heard in this series. I really do think the acting is really bad. Uh, even though, admittedly, Tom Atkins, I thought, at times, did bring some kind of charm. Unfortunately, I think most of the time, he even does a really bad job. I thought this character was so unlikable. The fact that he cheated on his wife with some random person, it's just like, ugh, really? And also, I know this is a standalone film, and I'm all up for standalone films, but it's like, why even call this Halloween 3 if it's really not going to have anything to do with Halloween? And the thing that bothers me is the fact that, just to remind you that this is still part of the Halloween franchise, there's actually a couple of times where they show you a TV promo of the original Halloween on television just to remind you, oh, don't forget, this is a Halloween film. This is still part of the Halloween franchise. So Don't you wish you were watching that movie instead? Yes, yes. It's like they're basically telling you a couple of times, wouldn't you rather watch this movie again instead? It felt so shoehorned how they even did that. 
the music for the majority of it it's just it just does not work it's really bad besides maybe little moments where i'm like okay that kind of worked uh i thought the music for the most part was really bad but the thing that just really bugged me um was just the fact that it just does not feel halloween at all like nothing about this movie screams halloween there's a point film fan where i'm uh, I know we talked about this. There was a point where I thought I was watching an old school Mission Impossible movie. Do you know what scene I'm talking about? <laughs> like, I literally thought at one point in this film, I was watching a Mission Impossible movie. That's how, <laughs> that's how much it does not carry that Halloween vibe at all. And man just the whole storyline is just so ridiculous and as if this movie couldn't be any more ridiculous oh yeah and the kills the kills are just lame they're they're really really bad like there's a scene that could have been a really cool scene and it deals with the drill i thought okay maybe this could be the scene i remember right no just when you think it could have been a memorable scene they just cut away from it so it's like yeah, probably the the most enjoyment I got of a kill was when they pull off a head, and that was like that went by very quick. So yeah, even the kills do not do anything for me at all. I don't care about these characters. The acting's really bad. The line delivery is really bad. Uh, filmmaking for the most part is just really baffling. There's like moments where the camera will shake up around quite a bit and you can't really properly see what's going on. Even the lighting I thought was very poor, but of course, oh, and the antagonist too, the antagonist, I can't forget about the antagonist. The antagonist is Some like- the worst one... antagonist I've seen in a good while, to be honest. Yeah, this antagonist was really bad. His motivation for why he's even doing this is really stupid. And as if you can't think the movie could get any more ridiculous, when it gets to that third act, the movie just, just it just completely loses itself. And of course, by the time it gets to that ending, the movie just abruptly cuts to the end credits and you're just left with, wow. That's what you made me sit through this movie for. This is what you oh, made yeah. me waste an hour and a half for. Um, yeah, that's all I see. All I have to say, if there's any more you want to see, that ending, kind of man, it's like you just wasted my time. Thanks a lot. <sighs> um, is there any more you want to say? Because I think I said all I need to say, honestly. Fuck this movie. That's all I got. It. Hi. Hey. So, uh, yeah, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, uh, I know it has a cult following. Yeah, if you really like this movie, good for you. Very happy for you. It just was not for me. It was too over the top for its own good. I think it's really badly written. Uh, it's very poorly directed for the most part. Even the music, for the most part, was really poor, in my opinion. And uh, the kills weren't even memorable at all. But it's like, after everything the movie made me sit through, it just whatever that ending was that's the ending they want us to think is like the payoff to the film there's like no payoff at the end of this movie for me there's nothing scary about this movie this is not even a so bad it's good like you would think some of these moments are like oh it's bad by it. no not even this movie makes me laugh there's nothing even really laugh worthy about this movie and i hate following these characters especially the lead character because He's not really uh, likable. So I'm going to give Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, one out of four stars. I truly just couldn't stand watching this movie. Um, just, yeah. Ugh. It's literally this thing was unbearable to watch, to be honest. So I'm going to give it a big old fat F. <laughs> Uh, if you like the movie, that's fine. I've got no problem with you liking the movie. You know, we all have different, you know, shit. You know, we look at things differently. Yeah. But for me, 
This is easily one of the worst horror films I think I've ever seen in my whole life. Now, we are going to be reviewing Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. And of course, they had to say that to let you know that Michael Myers is clearly in this movie. This one is directed by... Dwight H. Little, you have a lot of writers in terms of the story, but in terms of who wrote the screenplay, it is Alan B. McElroy. And of course, the film stars Donald Pleasance, who is back as the role of Dr. Loomis, along with new cast members such as Ellie Cornell and Danielle Harris. So Halloween 4 takes place 10 years after the events of the original. Michael Myers, after all this time, he comes back into town, and he comes back into town because it turns out that he actually has a little niece named Jamie Lloyd, and of course, it is up to Dr. Loomis to stop him from killing his own niece. Halloween 4. Um, now, um, obviously, since Halloween 3 did not do well at the time with most people um they had to obviously bring back michael myers which um you know even though that was the least of that movie's problems i will admit it was good to see uh michael myers back however the movie that he's in is not that good um it really isn't um it's very boring for the most part um there are some interesting things i did like in the movie there are some kills that i think were pretty cool but for the most part, really, I did think this was a boring installment. I really, for the most part, didn't care that much about the characters. Um, I thought the storyline wasn't nearly as interesting as it could have been. And, um, you know, I just really think there's a lot of just mediocre things that are going on, to be honest. Even some bad things at points, to be honest. But however, Donald Pleasant is great. Like I said, he really elevates a lot of these movies, even when... The actors aren't the best. Donald Pleasance is always the one that's, you know, the best out of all of them. And, you know, he gives a really great performance here. I really enjoy his character and stuff. Definitely the best aspect of this movie, in my opinion. There are some moments where there, the intensity does work. And I did think it was uh, very uh, well placed. But um, other than that, I do think the movie is just kind of mediocre, to be honest. It really isn't all that interesting. I Honestly, I really forgot it. After we watched it, to be honest, I really was starting to, like, lose memory of it. Like, as we... It's just a very forgettable film. Honestly, I really don't enjoy it all that much, to be honest. It's just whatever. Yeah, I have to agree. While this is definitely a step up from Halloween 3, I'll definitely give it that much credit. It's still not a very good movie. It's just one of those movies where I don't really hate watching it. It's just not a lot really happens. You have to It's kind of lame wait. as hell to be honest. And you have to wait a long time for Michael to kill someone. Like his kills are very sporadic in this movie. Yeah. Now, obviously, when he does kill someone, is it very cool? Yes, it's very entertaining. And is it nice to see him back after not seeing him at all in Halloween 3? Yes, it is. It's nice to see him back. Uh, but unfortunately, there is so much filler. It has characters I don't really care about. That does include Jamie Lloyd. I didn't really care for her. And I thought Daniela Harris, um, she wasn't like bad as Jamie Lloyd per se, but I didn't think she was the greatest. That same thing could go to the one that plays her foster sister, Ellie Cornell. There you go. Uh, yes. Yeah, she, she was fine, too, and the rest of the acting kind of ranges from, like, bad to whatever at this point. Uh, while there are dumb moments here and there that do happen, like I said, it's mostly just a filler movie. Not a lot really happens until once you get to the third act, and even that's not enough to really fully save this movie. But yes, there is some intensity to the film. The music is good. I do like the cinematography. And I did think that the direction was, you know, it's there. Um, the direction's there. It's not like the most memorable direction or anything, but it's there. Obviously, Donald Pleasance, easily uh, the best performance in this film. He is so good as Dr. Loomis. I really did enjoy him so much in this. And it's so good 
to see him back. Even though Jamie Lee Curtis isn't in this one, it was nice to see them reference her a little bit. So yeah, it's a forgettable movie that has its good things here and there. But yeah, it really is just so bland, so mediocre. Not really a whole lot to say, but I am going to give Halloween 4 two out of four stars. Overall, this is a very mediocre installment in this series, in my opinion. I really don't enjoy it all that much. Like I said, it's not a bad installment, but there's a lot of things that are not going right for it. And there's only a few little things that are going right for it, to be honest. A lot of things are going wrong for it. Uh, I'm going to give it a C-. minus. Now we're going to review Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. So, Halloween 5 is directed by Dominique Authorin Gerard. I hope that's how you pronounce the name. And it is written by Michael Jacobs, uh, Dominique Authorin Gerard, Shem Bitterman, and you do have the returning cast from the previous installment with Donald Pleasance, Ellie Cornell, and Danielle Harris. This one takes place one year after the events of Halloween 4, and Michael Myers returns to town to kill, no surprise, his niece, Jamie Lloyd. This was a truly, truly bad movie. I thought this was a truly bad installment into this franchise. I didn't think that the storyline was very well written. I think it's honestly very poor. The dialogue is really poorly written here. It's very boring. Just where they take the story, I just thought was just absolutely ridiculous. Admittedly, there is some really cool direction here. Like there is a little scene with the car. Like Michael was driving a car for a majority of this movie too. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, I will admit there's a cool scene where he's in the car and he's chasing after Jamie. I thought that was a very well-directed scene right there. And there's other scenes here and there that were well-directed. There's a few kills that were pretty cool. There aren't a lot that stick out, unfortunately, but there's a couple. The one that really stuck out with me, though, was the one at the barn. I will admit that was actually a very brutal and a very memorable. Oh, yeah, I was actually kind of I was actually kind of surprised uh, how the movie uh, the, the movie took it that uh, took it that way. To be honest. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like it's like that barn scene is just so boring, and it's just so, and the characters are just so bad. But it's like once, but once Michael Myers comes into that shit, that was legit a very cool kill. And obviously, Donald Pleasance. I'm gonna be repeating myself at this point. He's great, no surprise. He still does a terrific job as Dr. Loomis. He is not in here as much, however. Um, I do feel they kind of underuse him up until we start to get more to the third act. You know, that's when I feel like his presence used definitely a little more. So we could have gotten more of him instead of focusing on these other um, people, uh, these teenagers. But I did think he was still good for what he had. Uh, Jamie Lloyd, I still think, is fine for what she's doing. I, I'll admit, I don't think she's terrible in this one or the previous one. She's just fine. Same with her foster sister. She's fine. The rest of the performances, however, in this film how, are just really bad, really unwatchable. A lot of stuff in this film was just really ridiculous. Like I said, Michael Myers being in a freaking car for a majority of this film, especially the scene where she, he's driving a random girl. Uh, that, that entire scene was so stupid. There's just many more stupid scenes in this film that are just like that. And, of course, the ending of this film, it does set up to what we're going to see in the next installment. And, uh, yeah, the ending was really dumb. But not only is this a dumb movie, it just drags on and on to the point where by the time it did end, I just said, thank you, God, because, man, does it really drag. You go ahead, phone fan. Pretty much uh, hit the nail on the coffin, but, you know, um, yeah, this movie's really bad. With the last one where I just thought it was mediocre and boring to watch, this just, I don't know what they were trying to do with this. It, like, it, was, a, it was a really bad and boring film. Yeah, exactly. Like, the characters are a thousand times worse than this one, oh, to be oh, honest. Oh, oh, my God, yes. Like the, like, the acting is very bad for the most part. I could really care less about these characters. The story is very boring to watch. Is it nearly as interesting, honestly? And I just think 
they really do a poor job with this. The directing isn't even that good with this movie, to be honest. It feels very poor. Some of the kills are cool. Like the one in the barn, like you said, the, that was very cool. That was probably like the best part of the whole film, to be honest. Um, Donald Pleasant is really good here too, even though, um, like you said, he isn't used all that much in the film. Um, pretty much I like to call this movie, uh, Dr. Loomis yells at a kid the movie. Um, <laughs> yes, pretty uh, much. Pretty much because that's what this movie is. It, it just, it's bad. Like it really is. Like it, it's another installment in this franchise that just is almost unwatchable to be honest. Like it's got really bad characters, a really bad story to it and just, not really much going for it, to be honest. Oh, and film fan, we can't forget about that classic line in the climax. Uncle? Ah, uh, Jesus. And the climax, too. I forgot to say that. Yeah, that was just really stupid for the most part. Oh, just, oh, where they go with that is really dumb. <laughs> yeah, it was. So uh, that's all I have to say about it. Uh, is that all you have to say about it? Yep. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to drag this on for too long. I'm going to give Halloween 5 one and a half out of four stars. It is a really bad movie. And yeah. Yeah, um, pretty much. Um, I'm going to give uh, Halloween 5 a D. All right. Now we are here to talk about Halloween 6. The Curse of Michael Myers is directed by Joe Chappelle, and it is written by Daniel Ferrans. And you do have Donald Pleasance returning as the role of Dr. Loomis, and you have Paul Stephen Rudd. Not Paul Rudd, you have Paul Stephen Rudd yes. in this installment. <laughs> yes. So Halloween 6 is about when Michael Myers returns to this small town after terrorizing it six years ago. He's there for his niece Jamie, but at that point Jamie has escaped with her newborn child. And now Michael and some cult, they have something bad going on. Similar to Halloween 5, in my opinion, I thought this was also really bad the first half of the movie is one thing you know it's it's halloween you know it's like your usual traditional halloween and then the second half of the movie becomes this whole other thing it just takes this huge shift and it really focuses more on this cult this time around and it's just so weird because literally i noticed how the first half of this movie you know it plays like your usual like music for a Halloween film in this fashion, but then the second half just plays just random rock punk music, and <laughs> it just really takes me out of the film, and I'm just sitting there going, what is going on here? The writing with this is just so stupid. The dialogue is still very poorly written. There's a lot of scenes that I just thought were very unengaging. I was just still baffled by the amount of things that were happening in this film. It is so ridiculous. The climax in particular, just, it, it, it goes complete bonkers and not the good kind of bonkers. It's just a really baffling kind of bonkers for me. And the characters that I do actually like and can get behind, they're not even in this film that much. Like Donald Pleasance, if you thought they underused him in the fifth one, He's even more underused in this one. And that disappoints me because I love seeing him. He's so good as this character. And plus, and this, this, is the la and plus this is the last time we ever get to see him. Yeah, and this is the last time we see him as this character too. So the fact that this is the installment that underused him the most, it's really sad to me. But you know, God bless his soul. He's still terrific for what he has here. And Paul Stephen Rudd, I have to say, I like him here too. I thought he did a good job. I liked his character. He's also underused, like with Donald Pleasance, but... When he is in this film, I did find him to be very likable. As for the stuff with Michael, yeah, the kills, they weren't really all that well done. And even the filmmaking, I felt really downgraded here because it really felt straight to DVD. And they have these really weird edits. Most of these movies, I know I, f I forgot to bring up the editing when talking about these movies, but with most of these movies, I feel the editing is like really weird. And in this one in particular, just really weirdly really edited. The music wasn't even that good at all in this film, to be honest. The direction was definitely 
some of the most poor that this franchise had to deliver. Here and there, uh, it may have a moment that I thought was kind of cool, but besides that, yeah, I really was not a fan of this film. I think it's really poor. Um, I don't hate this movie. It's just it, it kind of with the first, uh, with the uh, fourth one, it's just kind of boring to me. I just don't find it nearly as interesting. I will admit the worst aspect of this entire movie is the whole cult thing. I do think that is the worst aspect of this entire film. Mm -hmm. um, I felt they just kind of overdid that, and it was oh, like... they really overdid that. It was oh like, what the hell's going on here? Um, that was definitely the worst aspect of the movie for me, but everything else I just thought was kind of... Eh. Okay, maybe the other thing is the directing. I will admit it is not that well-filmed. Um, it, de it definitely, definitely feels like a very straight to DVD <laughs> oh my horror God. film. It really does feel like it. it. it um, but other than that, I was just kind of bored while watching this. I didn't really care about most of the characters. The two characters I actually did care about were barely in this thing, uh, which were Donald Pleasance and Paul uh, Steven Rudd. Um, like, <laughs> um, I liked I liked them a lot, but they're barely in it though. Yeah. Like they're, like they're barely in this movie and um but um like we focus on you know jamie and everything i could care less about what's going on with the no, i'm sorry not jamie but like this other chick and like um it's just not that interesting yeah i agree like it just becomes very boring in my opinion and um he, uh, Michael, you know, some of the things, like, his, some of the kills he has, like, the when he puts, like, um, someone through, like, this, like, spike thing, like, this machine, like, that was kind of brutal, and I thought that was cool, but... Yeah, that was pretty cool, that was pretty cool. Um, but overall, for me, I just think this movie is just kind of bland, to be honest. Like, there are some cool aspects with it, but, um... I really do think, overall, it's not that enjoyable, and like you said before, the use of music here is not that great. Honestly, like, um, I love rock music just as much as the next person, but, um, the way it's implemented into this film does not fit at all, and it feels very, very out of place. So, yeah, um, overall, it's just kind of mediocre to me. Yeah, so, uh, for me, uh, overall, uh, as I've already stated, I really hated this movie. I think it's really poor uh in its writing as directing my god did it really downgrade with its filmmaking i couldn't believe it and just what i stated it's it's um it's like um your normal typical halloween fashion the first half and then the second half focuses more on this cult thing which was just really unbearable to watch in all honesty um and even though i like paul rudd and donald pleasance the characters i care about the most as i've already said they're really underused here so even that's not enough for me to get a little more enjoyment out of this film there's just more i really dislike out of this film that i do like and i am going to give it the same rating i just gave halloween five which is one and a half out of four stars i'm gonna give halloween uh the curse of michael myers a c minus now we are here to talk about Halloween 20 years later or H2O, whatever you want to call this thing. And this one is directed by Steve Miner and it is written by Robert Zappia and Matt Greenberg. The film does star Jamie Lee Curtis, Adam Arkin, Michelle Williams, Jolie Lynn O'Keel, Janet Leigh, Josh Hartnett, and LL Cool Yeah, my lord and savior. <laughs> So Halloween, as if the title couldn't be any more specific, it does take place 20 years after the events of Halloween. Laurie Strode, even 20 years later, is still dealing with the trauma of what she had to go through in that time. And of course, she's even more paranoid because of the fact that Michael Myers could harm her own son. And of course, she must do what she can to make sure that does not happen. So when it comes to Halloween H2O, considering how much this franchise has really gone downhill after the second Halloween for me, I was just all like, oh, come on. Can there just be another one? Can there just be another installment I can just enjoy? I just want a really entertaining movie. Give me something. And by 
God damn it. I'm so happy to say I actually really, really enjoy Halloween 20 years later. Like, this is easily the best installment since the first and second Halloween film for me. It feels so good to actually be positive on a Halloween film again. This one in particular, I felt fully was able to capture back that Halloween spirit that I do feel was missing for a very long time. The opening scene of this film, without spoiling anything, is honestly one of my favorite opening scenes in this entire franchise. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I won't spoil it, but a famous actor does happen to appear in this opening scene. I thought he did a very good job. All of the actors in the opening scene of this film, I thought did a very good job. And it was very intense. Like the opening scene just really just set the mood for the rest of Halloween 20 years later, which I really appreciated. I I'm going to be honest. It's probably my favorite opening scene in the entire franchise. I just really think it, it just build you up of what is going to happen in the movie to be honest it even surpasses the original because i know how the original is like very high in your mind um yeah honestly like it's like always neck and neck between those two for me honestly because i really love that opening scene but this opening scene here too like it just both of them set the atmosphere so well for what is to come in the in these movies like and seriously not, and not only that but this is longer than the originals opening scene this was this took up like the first 10 minutes of the movie oh yeah for sure and um and this movie really brought back what the made the first two so enjoyable like it had great characters it had interesting kills like it had an interesting story going around with it like it was really good honestly like i really enjoyed this movie a lot it is a blast of a movie to watch honestly like you know i really enjoyed a lot of the characters here i actually um love that jamie lee curtis came back for this one um i find it funny that it's 20 years later in this time perspective of this movie and it's now 20 years later since this film i know right that's insane to think exactly but um yeah, she does a great job here. Um, really, um, I really like, you know, how um, she portrays the fact that, you know, she has kind of uh, PTSD from this, like, you know, from that event. Like, you know, if she is suffering a lot from what happened. Like, it, it scarred her badly. And you see that throughout the film. Like, she carries a gun, like, underneath her bed, just in case if something happens. Like, it's very great. Like, I really like how her character is portrayed here. And, you know, Lee Curtis does a great job as the character. Like, she really does. And this is definitely, um, like, one of her best portrayals of the character for sure. So, yeah, I loved her in this movie. Um, all the other characters are really good, too. Josh Hartnett um, plays um, her son in the movie. He was really good, too. I actually really liked him a lot. Michelle Williams is actually in this movie, too. And she was great. I actually really liked her. Like, there were, the characters are a, a thousand times better um, this time around than a lot of the installments in this franchise. And, of course... I gotta talk about my boy. My boy LL Cool J, okay? When this, oh man. When, when the sad thing that the three best actors in this entire franchise were Jamie Lee Curtis, Donald Pleasance, and LL Cool J. <laughs> um, but seriously though, LL Cool J was actually really good here. I actually enjoyed him a lot. Um, besides um, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis... Um, he was my favorite character, honestly, in the entire film. Just every time um, he appeared, it was just a blast to see him. Um, like, every time he would have the argument with his wife on the phone, that was great. And um, Oh, my when, God, yes. Um, and, you know, he has to have his much more serious moments. I actually do think he actually does a really great job, to be honest. Like, he's actually really good. Like, it's like uh, definitely gives uh, one of the most surprising performances I think I've ever seen in my life. Because, you know, you would think, oh, LL Cool J in the Halloween movie that sounds silly but he actually does a really good job here like i actually quite like him a lot in this film oh yeah absolutely like i think the kills are a lot lot better um in this one than most of the fran franchises installments like a lot oh, more absolutely. like a lot more brutal as well like some of the ones they do here are like really brutal and um yeah, it, it was a lot scary, a lot more intense. I felt like a lot more of the intensity this time around. I was, you know, actually interested in what was going on. 
Yeah, yeah. I have to agree with that. That's the thing I really like about this movie. It does a very good job of keeping your attention. And uh, Michael Myers, when you really think about it, after the opening scene of the movie, all he does for the rest of the movie before the climax, it's just him like popping out. Like, for example, when Michelle Williams looks out the window and he just happens to be standing there, like he does a lot of that. But he doesn't really do a lot more of his usual killings until the last 30, maybe 35 minutes of the movie, honestly. And I thought it was very cool. Some people might have an issue that he's underused, and I can understand that. But for me, I actually liked how after that opening scene, it's just Michael Myers just maybe sneaking up on someone, like El Cool J, for example, when he's sneaking up on El Cool J. That was a very, not only intense, but I thought that was a funny scene at the same time. Like I liked how all he did was like, either just stand around outside to creep out someone or just sneak up on someone. And then once we get to that climax, that's when we really get into more of that Michael Myers killing. And when he does get to his usual killing, like you said, it is brutal. It has, I think, some of the best kills in this entire franchise. I think the kills are honestly so well done. There's so much fun to watch. And I have to say, this is just my own personal opinion when I say this, but I think this is the best acted Halloween film. This is the first Halloween film where I didn't think there was, like, per se, a bad performance. There may have been a couple of okay performances, but not, like, bad uh, performances. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, aside from, like, a couple of performances that I thought were okay, I thought everyone else did a really great job. Jamie Lee Curtis, she really um, never lost her magic touch when it came to Laurie Strode. You know, despite the fact that she has not been in Halloween films since Halloween 2, it never felt like she really lost that magic. Uh, she still continues that excellent streak of Laurie Strode. And she she really was just born to play this role because she, she is just so good. The emotion she brings out of this character, especially since we see what this character goes through 20 years later, where she's going through this trauma. She's just so paranoid. She's overprotective of her son. That's just because she doesn't want her son to face um, Michael or Michael possibly just even killing her own son. Like just seeing her go through that. And even the dramatic scenes, this even has some of the best dramatic scenes this franchise has to offer as well. This scene where she's talking to her boyfriend about her past. I thought that was a very honestly well-directed and well-written scene. I found that to be a very believable scene when she's talking to her son. I believe the drama there and I actually cared about the son. I thought the son was actually very well written and I thought the actor, like you said, Josh Hartnett, he did a really good job as the son. I thought he was very believable it was also interesting to see michelle williams who's obviously very young uh, i thought she was very good here i thought she did a very believable job definitely really enjoyed seeing her here but of course i agree with you film fan uh ll cool j our lord and savior he is uh he's really good here and i never thought i would live in a world where i would say l cool j is one of the best actors in the hallway franchise but as to God, I think he truly is. Like, he's so likable. He's so funny, too. And a lot of these Halloween films normally don't focus on humor, but I really liked how this one, it focused a little bit on humor whenever we cut to El Cool J, because whenever it does cut to him talking with his wife on the phone, it's yeah. so funny. Uh, it has me laughing so hard. And I, I want to see his. Uh, I want to see his fan fiction that he's uh, <clears throat> got. He's got. Uh, I want to see that. I want to see that now. <laughs> oh, and his whole bit with the fan fiction that was great too. Yes, I love seeing that. I really like the music a lot here. I think it has some of the uh, best music in this franchise, including how they did the theme song of Halloween here. I thought that was even very well done. Cinematography is a major step up when you compare it to the last Halloween film. It is very well shot. It looks very different too compared to the Halloween films in a good way, obviously. Felt a little more modern for the time it came out, but also did a very good job of having that Halloween atmosphere to it. And it is very well directed by Steve Miner. Uh, Steve Miner had a very nice directing style to it, and he really just was able to take me into this atmosphere. I really did care so much of what was happening in this film. There were so many things in this film that just 
really had my interest. And without spoiling anything, I have to say the ending of this film was so, so cool. It was so satisfying. And it honestly makes me mad that the movie after this one exists because I truly feel like this could have been the ending to this franchise. Um, you know, Tony, it made that money, so what? Yeah, that's true. That's true. But but yeah, this definitely could have been the ultimate end to this franchise in all honesty. That ending was just, oh man, that it, it just satisfied me for sure. I really just had so much fun with that. I had so much fun with the movie in general. As far as my problems, the movie does have these little false jump scares. Like whenever it has these moments where you think, oh, Michael Myers is here. Uh, Michael Myers is attacking someone. It ends up being someone else. Like there's this bathroom scene, granted very well directed. It's so intense. I'm like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen next? And then it turns out instead of Michael Myers, it's a little kid going, boo. And while, you know, that was cute and all, it does kind of take away from the intensity because what you expect to be Michael Myers, it's just some other random person uh, making an appearance. So that did take me out of the movie a little bit. Some of the dialogue isn't exactly the best. And as I already stated, there's maybe a couple of okay, but definitely not bad performances. Just like a couple of okay performances, a couple of characters that were very minor that I necessarily didn't really care about and yes it can get a little bit more over the top for its own good at times in its climax but honestly even with those flaws it does not take away my enjoyment with this film this movie is such a blast from beginning to end it's well paced too honestly i didn't think it was really all that boring i thought it had a nice natural pace to it i was just having a lot of fun with it and whenever it focused on the more dramatic scenes i really cared about what was happening and it just came off as so genuine so yeah this was a very entertaining installment for me um yeah pretty much what you said man very enjoyable definitely um probably my second favorite in the whole franchise to be honest overall i have to say i'm gonna be honest when i say this out of the three solid halloween movies in my opinion between the first the second and this one even though i did dig the first two this actually has to be my favorite in the original franchise it does feel fulfilling to actually get another really solid really entertaining installment i'm gonna give halloween 20 years later or h2o three out of four stars i'm gonna give halloween h2o a b plus and now we are here for the finale of this oh my God, franchise oh my review. Deep. I cannot believe a film fan. It, it is Halloween Resurrection. So Halloween Resurrection takes place three years after the events of what happened in Halloween 20 years later. Michael Myers, he's coming to see his sister and kill her. And then after that basically happens, he now travels to Haddonfield to deal with the cast and crew of this reality show that they happen to be filming at his old home. It is directed by Rick Rosenthal. And the film is written by Larry Brand and Sean Hood. And of course, it does star Buster Rhymes and Jamie Lee Curtis. All right. And also so, Katie Sackhoff. Thank you. Thank you. Katie Sackhoff as well. So obviously, this is a sequel to Halloween 20 years later, even though it doesn't really feel much like one after the first 15 minutes. But, you know, it's here. And um, I have to say, wow, just when I thought the franchise was back on track, it, uh, it went down the hill again. It even went more downhill than the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth one for me. Uh, this is pretty much on par with uh, Halloween 3 for me. That's how much I hate Resurrection, a god-awful installment to this franchise that I really wish didn't happen, but it's here, so yeah. But I will yeah, say... Yeah, like, what, to be honest, like, what was the purpose of this movie, to be honest? 
other yeah. than the first other than the first 15 minutes what was the purpose of this there really is no purpose to it at all i will say i did have fun with the first 15 minutes you know when michael is visiting laurie strode and he's after laurie strode i don't think it's a spoiler when i say this but after the first 15 minutes laurie strode does die do you think that's really sport this no, not her? really i think everyone knows that she dies i mean literally she agreed to do this movie unless if she died in the film so that's true so um yeah i will say i did kind of have fun with that because honest to god that's the closest i got to a halloween film somewhat uh and i'll definitely get to that a little later but yeah i'm not gonna lie i had some fun with the first 15 minutes jamie lee curtis unfortunately it's her weakest performance because you can clearly tell that she's just like okay let's get this out of the way so i can collect my paycheck it did feel like a paycheck for her you could clearly tell on screen she's doing it for the paycheck so yeah sadly it is her weakest performance as this character i have to say but even with that it was still fun to see her and michael one last time buster rhymes admittedly made me laugh a few times buster rhymes is the best thing of this whole damn movie to be honest like yeah, it, he's easily the best thing about this pure, just garbage of a movie. He really is just so kung fu kicks, people. Kung fu kicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his famous kung fu uh, kick yell at freaking Michael Myers. That's easily the best scene in this film. So there's a few. And times of course, bum motherfucker. Burn. Yes. Can't forget about that quotable line right there. Yes. Yeah, uh, Buster Rhymes, I have to say, yeah, he's easily the best thing about this film. There's a couple of cool moments with Michael Myers. Uh, and aside from that, I think that's it. Yeah, yep, that, uh, that, pretty much, that, pretty much, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like, it just makes me sad that they just felt the need to milk out another installment and uh, yeah this just had to happen because after the first 15 minutes it's similar to how i feel about halloween 3 where even though despite the fact granted unlike halloween 3 you do have michael myers it still just doesn't feel like halloween and i think that's it feels why... like you want to know the best way i can describe it it feels like if mtv made a halloween film oh my god yes exactly and it's ironic considering the whole thing is Michael Myers killing the cast and crew of this reality TV show, which I don't know why that has to be a thing for some reason. Unfortunately, even with Michael Myers here, there's nothing that screams Halloween about it. Nothing about it captures that spirit. That spirit is completely lost. It really is just such a soulless, stupid, incredibly boring movie that just repeats itself and the filmmaking with the reality tv show and the characters that we follow i don't care about these characters like katie sackoff i'll say she's fine i don't think she's bad but i don't care about her character at all i don't care about following her about any of the other characters you know the only reason i even have some kind of care for buster ryan's is because he has a few entertaining moments Mainly towards the end of the film, he has those few like really entertaining and funny moments, but it's like it's such a slog. Like, even if you want to watch that famous Buster Rhyme kick and yell, I, I literally had to look at the timestamp for this film. You have to wait literally one hour and 13 minutes just to get to that amazing Buster Rhymes moment for a film that's so short. It just feels such a slog to get through. It has such poorly written dialogue here. The attempt at humor here is really embarrassing. Not a lot of it made me laugh unless it was like with Buster Rhymes. Just a lot of things in this movie really did just anger me. I think that's all I have to really say about Resurrection. It's just a film that I really hate so much. Resurrection is a big pile just a really big dumpster fire to be honest like it just like it seemed like they were getting back on the right foot with h2o and then this one comes along and just digs it down even more so than most of the installments in this franchise from the characters the characters are terrible the, the only character i have somewhat of sympathy for is buster rhymes because he's an at least entertaining me but um 
other than that, I could care less about the characters. I could care less about the lead girl and her relation, her online relationship with this guy. I could care oh, less yeah. about um, I could care less about Kay Sackoff as much as I love her. I could care less about her and her character in this movie. Um, and the other characters are very boring as well. Um, the editing and the filmmaking with this is very. Oh my god. The uh, what filmmaking and uh, writing, honestly, like it, it really did feel like if MTV were to make a Halloween film, it really felt like that. To be honest, um, the dialogue is terrible. It's very poorly edited, very poorly shot. Cinematography isn't even that good with this movie. To be honest, no, um, it, it really is not. Yeah, I forgot to bring that up. The cinematography is just so bad here. Um, it just uh, has a very bland and boring story to go along with it. Like you said, what was the purpose of this? Like, what was the purpose of this? Besides the first 15 minutes, really, what was needed for this movie? Like, it's just literally Michael just randomly killing just random people. Like, in the movie. On a, fr on a freaking reality show. Like, it's dumb. It really is. This movie is dumb. Like, really stupid, to be honest. And uh, for the most part, I really did enjoy it. The only time I really even enjoyed this movie was when Buster Rhymes just did his shenanigans, and then that's about it. Uh, so, yeah, when Buster Rhymes is the best thing about your Halloween film... That's, yeah. That's, that's interesting. B Buster Rhymes doing kung fu kicks onto Michael Myers is the best thing about your Halloween movie. Like, this movie is so bad, I just don't even know what to say anymore, film fan. Like, that's how much I hate this movie. I just don't know what to say anymore. Oh, like, this, like, this movie just baffled me so much watching that. In your opinion, I have to ask you, how did you feel about Jamie Lee Curtis for the short time she had here? Um, I really didn't even think she was that good, to be honest. Like, I felt it, like she was just like kind of... It felt like a paycheck for her, huh? It felt very much like Sigourney Weaver in Alien Resurrection. She was just there to really just get a paycheck and then just leave, to be honest. It really didn't feel like she wanted to be there. So, that being said, unfortunately, the original Halloween franchise with Halloween Resurrection ends with one out of four stars from me. For me, it ends with a D minus. So, everybody, that is the franchise review for Woo! the entire original Halloween franchise. I'll be honest, sadly, I may not be a fan of most of the installments in this franchise, but it was fun watching these with Film Fan, and it was definitely fun reviewing these with Film Fan as part of, you could say, our little Halloween, literally Halloween special. Yes, um, I'm glad I came up with this idea for a Halloween special because, like I said, we were really struggling to find out what we should do. And I felt like he, he wanted to see the other installments to his franchise. I figured it would be perfect to do it. So we did it. We've done it. We done done did it. We uh, watched all eight movies and we reviewed all eight movies. So we've done done did it. We done dig a, uh, dim a dome did it. Also, comment below and let me know what you think of each of the installments in the Halloween franchise. You could even give your thoughts on the Rob Zombie ones if you want to. But let me know what's your favorite, what's your least favorite in this franchise. I'm very interested to know what you have to say. So everybody, um, if you have not checked out Film Fan's, ch Film Fan's channel, I do highly recommend it. He has a really great channel. He does album reviews. He does movie reviews. He does top tens. Well, just lists in general. He does all kinds of stuff on his channel. All right. Um, thank you once again for having me on. Tony, I pretty much uh, um, thank you as usual for always bringing me on for your Halloween specials. Thank you very much for coming. As Anytime, my friend. Happy Halloween to everyone out there. Thank you, as always, for watching. This is 20 to Tire Dude here with Film Fan. And I'm Film Fan 0599, and we'll see you all later. Peace. And this is 22 Tiger Dude here with Tiger Power. Yeah.